Oh, hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's Trading Spotlight webinar here together with Admirals. It's Friday. It's the 8th of April 2022. And uh, today we want to look at something. Um, over the years, I uh, learned to be of um, high interest for many people, even though I then realized that I interpret the word automation of my trading a little different than um, what uh, usually you um, yeah, connect with, with this word automation of your trading. And this is exactly what um, we want to dig deeper into today. So today's topic is how to automate your trading and doing it the right way. Well, depending on what you define as uh, to be the right way, but in my case, what I define as the right way when it comes to automation of your trading. And um, so in this context, um, we have uh, plenty of, of um, things to cover. So I don't want to waste any time. If you watch the recording now on YouTube, please leave a thumb up here. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, um, um, please feel free to leave a comment uh, below the video if you have any questions um, um, around the content you, which you will witness in the upcoming 45 minutes around. Please um, ask the question right below the video. If you have any um, um, suggestions for topics in the future, feel free to also add them below the video. We'd be more than happy to um, uh, answer not just your questions, but also um, cover the topics which you are most interested in. And um, that's it around the introduction. Yeah, let's share the screen. Let's have a look here at um, the first slide, how to automate your trading, doing it the right way. And uh, first of all, probably start. One second. Zig. Sehr gut. <laughs> so I can I can uh, read here. I I um guten uh, Middag. I think this is uh, from the Netherlands uh, mo most likely. So guten Tag. This is German. So I'm located in Berlin in Germany. Uh, so obviously uh, we have guests from all over the world. This is the place where you can ask all your questions here during the during the um. Yeah, by the way, this is very interesting. So um, um, Antonio is uh, writing Guten Nachmittag. This is very interesting because um, so uh, in Italian, for example, you say uh, buongiorno, but also buonasera, uh, depending on uh, uh, on the location you're located in Italy. So for example, from around noon, so 12 or something, um, you usually have um, uh, the, the the border, which when you cross it, then um, uh, you 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 say buonasera. But depending a little on where you're located in Italy, uh, because this is usually the case if you're located in the southern part of Italy, if I'm not mistaken. So Calabria and uh, and 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 Sicilia and and so on and so forth. And in the northern part, I think um, you can still say buongiorno. Um, so Torino, Milano. Um, however, so <laughs> that's it around uh, the interesting. Namaste. <laughs> um, so let's uh, let's jump into the action. Um, first of all, the broker. Um, uh, uh, you can find offices around the globe, so this is probably um, a good good way to start. Then, um, a broker, which is in this um, industry, financial industry for um, I think over 20 years now, um, since the beginning of the 20, 21st century, um, offering over 8,000 financial um, instruments. By the way, oh, there's a, there's a small mistake in it. Let me just do it that way. Um, and yeah, offering um, not just the DAX. OB, here in Germany, for example, you usually refer to um, um, admirals um, as the so-called DAX expert. So with one of the most competitive, if not the um, most competitive offering when it comes to DAX trading with the tightest spreads, um, very, very quick um, um, order execution, um, very reliable in terms of a platform stability. Um, also, and this is something which you will also learn if you, if you dig deeper into the FX trading then um, here, you will have a broker with Admirals um, who is also um, very, very competitive when it comes to um, um, the overall um, FX offering in this context. Um, fully licensed, um, SISIC regulated for uh, European, um, 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 for the European hemisphere uh, after the Brexit that was necessary, um, but also UK slash FCA regulated, also um, an ASIC regulation in Australia, for example. So fully regulated, um, long thing short, Admiral market for further information if you're interested um 
And if you wish, um, uh, switch to the website and um, um, check out the details, you will probably most likely um, come across the so-called Admiral's Trade Days. This is something which is very interesting. Um, right now, you um, get a well. That's how, how can I how can I say that? You you can get a cashback on on the paid commission. So um, if you're trading, let's say, um, um, for example. Well, I don't know. You trade the DAX, or you trade you trade stocks, or whatever. You pay commission. Um, you can obviously receive up to three thousand euro cashback um, on your paid commission, which is very very um, important to consider if you're a professional trader and if you're especially more active in your trading. So um, all the details around this um, trade days offering can be found on the website. Um, terms and conditions apply, so um, 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 please read them carefully. Um, also contact um, Admirals for further information if this is of interest for you. Um, the slide here, one world, one broker. Well, I already um, came across this here now in the, in the first minutes. Um, and um, this is something which is of importance. I, I really like to, to say that over and over again. If you, um, if you are looking for a broker, a partner, um, when it comes to financial services, sometimes it's very important for people, um, understandably, um, to say, well, I want to talk to someone in my native language. Um, so here in Germany, for example, I was a trainee with a bank. Um, that's around 20 years ago, but still, um, there were also international people there. Um, and sometimes they just didn't feel happy uh, to talk about a certain um, financial topic in German, also in English, and that they wanted to talk to someone in their respective language. And this is something uh, where you have a very good chance um, with the broker who has um, a global um, 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 a presence here to talk to someone in your respective native, um, in, in your native language um, and feel just comfortable. And that's the round interaction. So let's jump into today's topic, today's agenda. First of all, I wanna give a quick introduction to automated trading and manual trading also. So the, the um, big difference between these two, um, but also, um, I want to give an idea of the intersections of these two, and, and this is something which um, um, it's of high interest for us. So I could imagine that most of the people watching these webinars here are usually people who are discretionary traders, so looking at the chart, and then um, I'm entering the order manually, let's say. Um, still, there should be an automation connected to this. So like you follow um, um, a predefined plan, um, like I do every day when it comes to game planning my trades. So over the last days, for example, probably have seen that Twitter was very, very hot. Um, saw some massive volume. Why? Because um, Elon Musk um, released um, a statement that was already, I think, on Monday, yeah, pre-market Monday, um, that he is now the um, biggest um, 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 shareholder here and, and bought Twitter stock. Um, well, I think something like 9.1, 9.2% or so um, 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 of, the, of the outstanding shares, making him the, the biggest um, um, stakeholder. Well, okay, that brings the, the stock in play. It's one of the reasons why it's hot. Then I have um, clear reasons how I define hotness um, in terms of a stock saying, well, this is the pre-market one I want to see being turned over um, in relation to the, to the average daily trading volume. If this is greater than a 10%, so if you have an average daily trading volume, let's say of 20 million, well, I need 2 million to be traded already pre-market that the stock is obviously actively traded. That was no big deal. Not on Monday, not on Tuesday, not on Wednesday. And also, um, I think yesterday was the first time it was below that, that threshold. Um, and that's um, then the first trigger. So why the stock is of interest for me? And then I say, okay, let's have a look now at the 30 minute chart. So where do we stand? Uptrend, downtrend. Well, we see um, um, an uptrend happening. Then I have my, my key levels. I write down what's the ATR, the average to range. So um, average trading volatility, you see. Well, we don't dig too deep into this now, but um, there's a clear uh, and clean routine I follow. And I, I use then this routine here to um, get an overview view of where do we stand in the stock, why the stock is for me of interest, and then writing down the key parameters I need to trade it, game plan around certain levels. For example, today, I have the stock once again on, on my, on my um, watch list and uh, 47 is, for example, the, the key level. So if we break that level and trade below that, well, I could imagine that there's further um, 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 
further 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 momentum on the downside after yesterday for example yesterday 50 around 51 was in fact the key level 50 50 uh, in the middle that was the average price which was paid and then i say well this is the level i traded against long thing short so there's an automation taking place every day and um Still, um, I, I enter my trades manually. So that means in this context, um, and this is something um, which should go hand in hand, and we can already see based on this um, simple example where these two um, segments intersect. So it's not a complete automation, but there's still some clear, clean rules I follow every day and day in and day out. And um, Still, we want to dig a little then also into the automation. So um, um, uh, it's not just the process we follow here, but also on automation in terms of our trading. So when we talk about automation of our trading or algorithmic trading or quantitative trading, are they all the same? This is a question we want to answer here. And then we also want to um, get an idea on how to start algorithmic trading. And it's not about getting programming. Um, I'm, I'm an expert advisor, for example, and say, I just push the button here and then um, we trade after this and that. Um, 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 scenarios are, are given and, and um, then we take it from there but also um, I want to I want to show you how to automate this process in general follow this this um, routine day in and day out and um, the, the reason we do this is because we want to start our trading day with an edge in this context and at the end we will look at an example pretty pretty straightforward one but still to get an idea of how to combine the best of these two worlds so first of all, let's start with the differences here in this, um, uh, um, um, uh, the differences between automation and, and, and um, um, manual trading, discretionary trading. So manual trading, um, in this case, we could easily say that trades are entered by a human. So that's you, that's me clicking a mouse then. And what we do is we make our trading decisions mostly based on technical, but sometimes also based on fundamental and sentiment-based patterns. In my case, for example, um, it's a combination of all three. So um, um, it's, it's not that I say I'm a purely technical trader. Um, I certainly know, let's call it the basics of, of technical analysis, but um, I don't um, I, I don't take trades only based solely on these automation um, 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 technical patterns, I'm sorry, um, on these technical patterns. But I also want to see in case of trading stocks, for example, a fundamental driver. So why should be um, um, a stock of interest? I mean, certainly there will be breakouts, like we're breaking to new all-time highs or something like that. Let's take, for example, um, HP and the stake, which was announced, I think, yesterday pre-market that Berkshire Hathaway and, and Warren Buffett are entering here um, 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 with a big stake in HP. This pushed the stock higher, and we are, we are trading around um, um, new potential all-time highs. And then I say, well, if we break above that level, many market participants seeing that, well, this is probably then the driver higher. We didn't follow through on the upside. This is probably a sign of weakness. Um, and this is now bringing us um, into the next thing. So I have the fundamental driver. I have the technical picture. So why is the stock probably hot? Well, we see the breakout, probably purely technical because we are breaking to new highs, new lows, whatever. But still, when I talk about sentiment, this is also a question of like, what is the overall bias um, of the market participants, respectively? Where was... Um, most of the volume being done. So when is the point um, reached where market participants are, um, um, let's say, on the water? So like um, this is this is like now they 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 feel pain. This is especially something which is of interest right now in Twitter. So when I talked about 50, uh, 20, uh, 50, 50, for example, that was the average price based on the volume which was paid from market participants from Monday till Wednesday. And yesterday I said, well. Now the thing is, um, there was a, a trigger event, a fundamental driver, like Musk is buying something like, I don't know, 9% of, of the overall um, shares from Twitter. Um, the next day you get pre-market the announcement, well, Musk is now also part of the board of directors, well, great. So this is um, one of the greatest entrepreneurs of our time, probably a genius being considered a genius like um, SpaceX, especially the Tesla CEO. So if this guy is now um, um, uh, having, uh, he has something to say uh, at Twitter, well, probably this is a starting point then um, of higher profitability in the, in the future. Not really sure about that story, to be honest. So I was very skeptical right from the start, if this is a true bullish driver, or if this is not like a probably short-term over push on the upside and then probably we're rolling over um, and given my bias here so my 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 opinion i had 
which is not um, 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 automated, but which is based on on my on my um, overall view on on the on the stock on the company and so on and so on and so forth. And then ask the question: Well, when is the point reached when market participants who bought that story um, are underwater? When do they start to feel pain? And that was um, then starting from the average price from Monday being paid till Wednesday. And then I said yesterday, well, if we drop 50-50, this is probably the point then um, that market participants start to dump their shares, especially if the overall market then starts to, to um, um, sell out. Well, and then probably we have potential down to 47. We reached that level. And this is now the region around which we are trading here. And this could continue um, today if now um, um, there's no further story being told about, okay, well, what, what comes next? Um, so and now he's in the board of directors. Well, this was the only reason why the stock pushed nearly 30, 40% or higher or so. Um, and then we have the overall market probably also weakening if this really plays out, then the short side should be favored. And this is how I enter the trade then, based on certain technical levels I, I identified before. But you see, this is some um, an automated process somehow combined with the technical levels, but all in all, I enter the trade um, manually. When we talk about automated trading, well, then um, we have this pattern recognition. Um, even though, well, um, the trades are usually automatically entered, so completely taking out the human component. So like, for example, you, you've seen recent webinars we held together when, when we said like, okay, um, let's look at FX Euro JPY, for example, and they're an intraday trading as perspective, um, and we want to take trades on, or the DAX, or S&P 500, or gold. And there were clear parameters given um, um, which you could easily enter into an algorithm in this case. You could automate the whole process of entering the trade. So for example, yesterday, um, one of the, 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 the um, um, strategies we made the topic, make things very easy here, was gold. We buy gold at the closing price of, of the Thursday, and then we sell gold at the closing price of Friday. Now you might say, well, this is a strategy which works. Interesting enough, yes, it does. Um, and and we, we showed um, um, the, the, the back test result then. And if you if you don't remember the webinar, um, just look out um, uh, look look out for the webinar in the um, um, YouTube channel from from Atmos. You will you will find it there. Um, but coming back to the automation of your trading, so we don't care um, if there is a let's say geopolitical escalation, or we don't care if there is non-farm payrolls being released um, on the first Friday each month, or um, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. We just have the pattern and we see, okay, if we buy here and if we sell there, um, so given the price at a time, um, at a certain um, time, well, this is profitable for whatever reason. So usually there has to be um, a reason. So it has to make sense. In case of gold, it does make sense. Um, so there's some kind of, of, of risk aversion into the weekend to risk that some um, um, geopolitical tensions escalate or something like that. Market participants want to um, um, hatch part of their um, exposure or their portfolio and also physical gold dealers, for example, are buying already or giving in orders, buying orders to have physical gold there next week to work with in terms of jewelry whatever there might be the reason um, but still you automate this process completely um, and um, what it all comes down so this there's a clear um, 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 difference between these two so the first one is very let's say um, yeah very human very emotional so I have a bias I have a clear rule I follow yes but still um, I have a bias some people might completely disagree with my take that Twitter is potentially um, selling out against against 50 here I'm um, saying well if Musk is now board of um, part of the board of the directors well usually the stock should shoot higher um, and, and never look back um, while in case of automated trading, then um, we are taking this component, these emotions completely out. And there is no question about should we buy here, should we sell there? Um, there's just a clear I buy here and I sell there, um, given this backtest result and given the aspect that, that we're here looking at a strategy with a positive expected value. But in both cases, as you can see, um, we follow a clear and predefined um, set of rules here. And, and we have in both cases a positive expectancy, um, even though one might argue that 
especially automated um, 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 trading is, is truly statistic based given the fact this result, while um, manual trading has an emotional um, a component attached. And what's my edge and what I consider to be my edge and what I can see resulting in a rising equity curve does not necessarily mean that um, another trader is easily capable of duplicating this at his end. And um, so now what we, what we want to do is because there's usually, well, I wouldn't, wouldn't really say it's confusion, but some people probably wonder um, if, is, is this everything the same? So when we talk especially about automated trading, algorithmic trading, quantitative trading, is this really all the same? And in my world and in my wording and my and the way I, I talk and, and hold um, um, presentations, the answer is a clear yes. Um, <clears throat> but still, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> But still, um, some people might make at least some um, um, distinctions between these three. So when we talk about automated trading, usually what we see, um, we have a complete um, automation of the order generation, of the order submission, and the order execution process. So there's 100% automation connected to this. Um, in case of algorithmic trading, it's very similar, but some might argue it's not 100% the same. So in algorithmic trading, um, what, you, what you say is one um, um, turns a trading idea into an algorithm, in fact, So which means a process of um, um, set rules which you follow. And then what you do is the um, created algorithm is then backtested with historical data to check whether it worked in the past. So um, this is something um, um, which, which should be taken into account, um, like algorithmic trading in this case, is very similar to building a trading strategy. That's probably a good way to put it. So you um, recognize a pattern, um, you see, okay, well, let's say we have a high and a low, let's say an FX pair where um, when trading equities, for example, so we have a high and then we have a low. Um, and then uh, what we say is, if we see a breakout, in direction of a predetermined um, 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 advantage. So like we say, well, if we're trading above the, let's say EMA 50 on a five minute time frame when it comes to the DAX, um, uh, we, we, are, we are taking long um, positions while we are going short once we trade below the last five minute um, 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 closing price. Then we define a high and the low um, where we say, well, if we now get to see a break above that level, respectively below that level, and we trade, let's say, if we break above and, and, and we, we close the last five minute candle closes above the EMA 50 on a five minute time frame, boom, I'm going long. Um, and this is something I, I saw. Well, if the breakout happens, then usually the market continues to trade in direction of the breakout. And I, I let's say I recognize this pattern. And then the next step, what I do is I program this, I write it down. Um, usually in this case, write it down manually, or you write it down in terms of an algorithm, like in MQL5 or something in the MetaTrader, um, you, you, you're um, writing down a code in terms of, of, the, of the expert advisor. And then what you do is you download historical data. So you contact the broker, in this case, you contact Admirals and say, hey guys, I have an idea here, I want to trade, but um, I want to check out whether my idea really works. And so the next step, what you do is you test the data going back, let's say the last two years or so. And if you then see that there's a rising equity curve and that you're profitable after um, um, subtracting all, all um, costs which are involved. So like commissions you might pay if you have a zero account or something like that. Um, and you see that works and it pays a positive, um, 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 you have a positive return, positive expectancy, then obviously at least in the last two years, the strategy worked and then you can um, um, let this algorithm work um, in the real world in this case. Um, by the way, and now I have to just before we come to the last point here of this slide, um, in terms of quantitative trading, I have to write down, following my daily routine, I have to write down here some data on the pre-market volume, so which I have to, to hear, let me just see. So in case of HPQ, so this is a stock which is also in, of interest today, given the fact, even though it's not as hot as yesterday, um, that we have nearly 500,000 shares been traded already in the pre-market. And now the next, the next one is again, Twitter. Let me just see here. So what I do here, by the way, and, and why I, I write this down is because um, if I trade, so if I finish this, this webinar, 
so in around 20, 25, 30 minutes. Um, and I then start to trade for the day and I have a trade, well, to draw conclusions out of my doing and, and whether what I did was um, um, good or bad afterwards and, and, and knowing um, what I did and, and how to um, duplicate um, mistakes, um, not mistakes, duplicate um, success in the future, respectively, how to avoid mistakes um, um, in the future. I have to, to, to really know, I have to clearly know um, what did I do, which were the parameters, like um, was the stock really hot for me? Does, did it make sense to trade it today? Um, or should I have waited or so on and so forth. So to, to, um, um, to, to really realize where a mistake has been, um, 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 could have been seen, um, you really have to collect all the necessary data over and over again, and then take it from there and, 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 and be capable of really duplicating your trading in the most um, um, accurate, accurate way, let's say, um, 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 and, and in this context, and be really capable of, of working with the data which you collect. And then make a be capable of making a comparison of the trades um, 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 in, the, in, the, in the past. So coming back to the presentation, quantitative trading. So quantitative trading um, involves, in fact, using advanced mathematical and statistical models um, for creating and executing an algorithmic trading strategy. So again, it has something to do with, with algorithms. So you have to really say, OK, I do this and that then and then, um, and this and that is given. So like I'm um, having a clear routine you follow, but still um, you're working with advanced mathematical statistical models, like um, in case of, of statistical arbitrage or something like that. Um, we also had a webinar, if I'm not mistaken, on pairs trading, I'm pretty sure. Well, let, well, I'm not sure. If you're interested, leave a, leave a comment um, below the video, respectively now in the, in the chat box, if you want to hear something on this. I think this is also a very interesting topic, in fact. Um, and this is, again, something which you can work with um, um, based on mathematical models, which you can then automate and then take, take, your, trading, take your trading from there. So <clears throat> now let's have a look here at the first steps on, on how to get started in, in algorithmic trading in general. So when it comes to automate your trading, but also in terms of a, of a, um, of a clear, clean process you follow. What we, do, uh, what, what we want to know now, or what we want to do is we want to, first of all, give some, some insights, some, some thoughts on, on, on where to start. If you ever thought about um, how to automate your trading, this is probably a good, good starting point here. Um, and, and there's, I mean, there, there's certainly other ways to, to, um, 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 to, to, um, enter this world of, of automated trading here in this case, but, um, in case of, of um, um, algorithmic trading, first of all, what we have to do is we have to identify core areas. So um, first of all, it's um, quantitative analysis and modeling. So this is working on statistics, exploring historical data from exchanging and designing new algorithmic trading strategies. So this is like, first of all, you have um, pattern recognition. So you, you realize a certain pattern. So you see this is, this is lots of work. Um, so because this is now the next thing, it's a very individual thing. So so it's not that that you say, well, give me a, a strategy, and I just click on um, run, and then um, I automate my trading, and 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 then I, I I just get rich that way. So even that, if that might be theoretically possible, because you have a, a, a highly profitable trading strategy, and in this context, I um, um for example recommend the book. I'm not really sure. It's the um uh, it's 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 one from from a guy. Who, who has also written something on uh, HFTs um, on Wall Street and uh, the Flash Boys. It wasn't the Flash Boys. This is not right because Michael Lewis wrote the book on Flash Boys. I think his name is Pattinson or something like that. He also uh, did, a, did a, um, um, uh, a biography on, uh, on uh, Jim Simons. He's the founder of um, Renaissance Technology and, and Rentac is, is probably one of the most um, um, successful hedge funds of all time. And um, uh, Simons is um, also a mathematician and they are very um, um, strong in the, in, the, in the, let's say, a quantitative trading world. And um, so the thing is, uh, um, the, the thing is that, 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 that this is, um, I'm giving you some, 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 some insights on how to, to recognize patterns. And even if these guys realize that these patterns might work for them, 
um, you could use them, but still don't have the capability of executing the same way they did, respectively trusting the systems they, they did, um, the way they did, and, and thus um, creating some uh, discrepancy, let's say, um, when it comes to um, um, following the, the predefined rules in this context. So it's not just you click it and, 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 and then it runs, but it really has to work with you. It has to correspond with you well. And um, so that's, that's the first thing where you can realize, where we you have to realize that it's lots of work working out your strategy, which corresponds with your personality. Um, in terms of, of, of quantitative analysis and modeling, first of all, you have to have a knack, let's say, for statistics. Um, you have also have to have access to statistical or historical data in this case. So that's what I referred to when I talked about admirals. But you can also go directly to the, to the exchanges and you will find out that they take plenty of, of um, um, lots of money, in fact, and make lots of money out of, of providing you with the data. And, um, and then, well, what you, what you then say is, okay, I recognize a certain pattern um, and I wanna test this now. And therefore, to test it and, and, and work with these um, tons of, of um, uh, let's say, tons of, of data, well, you have to have certain programming skills. So like when we talk about the MetaTrader in the case of MT4, MT5, well, you have to have lots of knowledge in terms of MQL. Personally, I prefer Python. Um, the reason for that is it's easier than a C++, at least as far as I can say. Um, and um, in fact, what, what can be already enough can be um, um, basic skills that could be already a great starting point um, um, from where to, to, to program and analyze and work with, with data and, 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 and get started in the world of data science in this context. And certainly also, um, you have to have a certain knowledge of, of trading and, and, and financial markets in general. So it's like, um, what are the differences, let's say, between uh, trading instruments, strategies? So what's the difference between trend following strategies, breakout strategies, mean reversion? You have to have certain um, 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 knowledge about the risk and money management in this context, for example. Um, and having all this, it's not enough because then the studying store, uh, starts. And, and this is now where you then say, okay, now where do I get started? Um, I haven't prepared anything here. Now, might, probably the, the first um, a question from you might be, okay, where do I get started when it comes to Python? Um, I highly recommend lots of, of, of online courses which are available, sometimes quite cheap in fact, so they're, they're not very expensive. Um, First of all, the, the basics um, to get to know in Python, let's say. Um, in addition to that, then adding like a financial modeling in Python, building on um, the basics you just um, um, got your hands on, you studied about. Um, and there are online courses in Udemy or in, in Teachable, for example, um, which I highly recommend. So this is where I got started when it came to, to um, 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 automating my trading and working with these programs in my, my trading. And it's, by the way, not necessary, only necessary that you say, hey, um, um, uh, I, I want to start a career, let's say, as, a, as an algo trader or something like that. But it's also um, possible to use your knowledge here in Python and then um, backtest certain patterns in the past, um, analyze or um, um, data science, let's say, um, 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 historical data to see, okay, where do we stand right now from a seasonal perspective, for example, or let's say, assume like in, in case of the S&P 500, let me just, by the way. Okay, that's interesting. So S&P com coming in now, so that's why I, I also looked here, but um, like we, we, we just seen a, a strong run after the last um, fat minutes. Uh, no, not for minutes. I'm sorry. Um, but the fat itself was the 16th of March, if I'm not mistaken, um, was quite hawkish. Um, and then we saw this sharp rise higher and not just the sharp rise higher, but it was um, four days a row that um, we finished 1% or higher um, in terms of closing prices the next day. So how often did this happen in the past and what happened from there? So what usually happens then, let's say 12 months after that? So is this just a bear market rally or is it probably um, the starting point of, 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 a, of a bigger rally? And if you analyze the data, if you run the data then for the last, I think 100 years or so, um, you find out that this happened only three times before. Now it's, it was the fourth time. And given that, on average, we um, 
12 months later, traded 25, 30% higher, if I'm not mistaken. So this is just a, um, 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 a thump, like, like, a, like, like, like a, a rough number I throw in here, but it's a strong bullish sign, in fact. You can use um, your, your Python knowledge here to um, um, analyze data sets that way and then draw conclusions from your investment perspective. Doesn't it necessarily need to be on in terms of, um, um, how can we say that? Um, doesn't need to, to, to be, to be um, um, only based on, um, 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 I want to automate my trading where short-term trading is, is of importance here, but you can also use this knowledge then to say, okay, well, um, this is probably um, where I can find my edge. Same is true in terms of stocks. So earnings season is about around the corner. So um, we have next week financials and then the week after um, 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 tech names starting, um, especially in the second half of, of the month of April. Well, certainly you want to know how did um, the stocks perform in the past after they released earnings in one or the other direction? And what can you draw out of this in terms of a conclusion when it comes to setups for the next day, so-called earnings plays, for example. So this is also where automation of your trading could play a very important role and where this, this, this um, programming skills um, are could be, should be, will be of high use, in fact. Um, Lots of ideas here um, in this case, by the way, can be found in blogs. So there's tons of, of articles which are completely for free. Um, um, you, can, you, can, you can read um, through here, for example. So there's lots of work being provided from guys um, who are very strong in terms of, of program and have lots of programming skills, giving you all these informations for free just to give something back. Um, well, this is just just uh, um, um, as traders are, in fact. So, uh, like, uh, this is something um, um, I give back to hopefully get a feedback back, so that I can improve my my skills here in this terms and and work with someone else, discuss it with someone. YouTube tutorials, um, um, forums in general. So there's lots and plenty of resources. I highly recommend it when it comes to to algorithmic trading. And um, this is just a starting point, and then you take it from there. So it's a uh, there's the, there's no clear rules you follow there, um, but everyone is different, let's say. So someone might say, well, I have to see that. I have to, to work with it myself. So that's one of the reasons why I went into such an online course. Some people might say, um, so, and that was video based. Um, some might say, well, nice, but still not the way I work and I function. That's not the learning tape I am. I have to read a log, blog article, for example, or um, um, I have to, to listen to an audio book first and then take it from there. So, and that's why I, I listed this here. Um, and then you, you have your own ideas and you just, you just take the next step. So let's now have a look here at a um, um, example on how to use this. So first of all, we work with the pattern recognition um, and we want to want to automate the strategy. And there was no coincidence that I worked with the EMA 50 here in this context and then the five minute chart. Um, and you probably have um, um, known that it's not the DAX 30, by the way, anymore. Now it's um, um, if in this case, it should be DAX 40. So um, this, this is a chart from um, um, the DAX 30. Um, we work with, so you can see it here, but um, now we have to update it to DEX40. Um, and well, what, what do I realize? So I see a pattern, which, which um, um, is well known um, for years now, over, let's say, minimum 20 years, 30 years. So um, the name connected with the open range breakout in different markets is Toby Crable. And this guy um, sees, okay, we have a, a certain trading range between X and Y. Um, and then, well, we realize if there's a breakout after the spot market comes in, which is usually um, um, straight um, 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 straight away, respectively, that the time is, is, is predefined, um, they say, well, 9 a.m. German time, Xetra opens. Um, there's lots of volume coming in. If we get to see a breakout then in direction of an identified advantage, um, which we define here by this, this um, um, exponential uh, moving average, <clears throat> A 50 on a fifth minute time frame saying, okay, we trade below. Well, then we enter only short trades. Um, we see a breakout with the volume pouring into the market. And then we see the market is moving quite strongly away here from the breakout price. Okay, well, um, this is something which is of interest because now we, we wonder, okay, can we somehow automate this? Um, can we trade this profitably? I mean, this is one example, but is this happening over and over again? Um, well, it does. Um, we we define our our algorithm that way. We say, okay, these are um, um, for some reasons. Um, these are the the key elements we want to watch. So the time plays a very important role in this context. Volume pouring in, nine a.m. German time. Then I say, okay, I give the market five minutes. Um, why five minutes? Does it make sense? 
for me, it's a very um, easy filter I want to work with because if I know that at 9 a.m. German time, Xetra opens and there's lots of institutions um, and also retail traders pouring into the market, you see a spike in terms of volume um, and algorithms are entering the market and there's buyers and sellers and the market is spiking up and down and up and down and up and down. Um, this is just noise. So you don't really see, is this a breakout or is this just noise um, which will potentially spike you into a position which is um, um, happening of no real reason. And that's why I say, well, I wait the first five minutes and if these are through and we get to see a break to new highs or new lows, depending on where I identify the advantage, this is a clearer sign. Um, and then, um, well, advantage, okay, where do we are right here? So is it an uptrend? Is it a downtrend? Um, and then I say, okay, if we are an uptrend, obviously I don't want to uh, take trades on the short side. I want to trade the long side and vice versa. Well, and then we trade the break of the open range in this case. And, and what we want to do is then we want to, first of all, work with a, a predefined risk reward ratio of one to two in this case. So we want to, let's say, risk 50 bucks, and then we want to go for 100 euros in terms of reward um, um, we, want to, we want to have then. And um, so, and then I have here the back test of this a recognized pattern. So this is in fact where we where we start, and this is probably something you have you have seen there um, already before. So this is the pattern and the parameters I enter. I automate this with whatever trading language, uh, I'm sorry, programming language I'm working with, Python or MQL or whatever, and then. I, I run a test here. In this case, I'm, I'm just looking at a time span of something like one, one year. If you, you should definitely extend it. So one year is potentially too, too, um, 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 too small. Um, in this case, you might wonder why 2016, 2017. So this is in fact a back test. Um, I entered into my um, 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 book. I, I published in German, by the way. So it doesn't really matter for you in this case um, because it's an English webinar. But um, that's that's just a chart from here, so that you're not surprised to see 2016, 2017. That's a little longer way, five six years. Um, but this is usually the way I go through. So like I, I ask the question, okay, who am I? What's the time um, frame I want to trade? Um, um, can I can I trade automated? Let's say um, um, or yeah, that's one very important aspect. Am I that guy who is capable of giving control away? Let's say, um, can I or do I want to enter trades on an intraday basis because of my let's say personal risk profile? Saying hey. Um, I don't want to hold positions overnight because I, I, I see the risk of, of overnight um, um, gaps, for example. So I might now shake with the heads because saying, hmm. uh, right now we see it like a 24-5 trading. Well, times are different now. Let's say 10 years ago, there was usually um, 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 a pause in terms of trading from uh, 10 a.m. I'm sorry, 10 p.m. German time till the next morning, 8 a.m. And so during that time, if there's something bad, like something horrible, like, like say Fukushima happened, well, you have a gap down of 1,000 points. Um, that's something you, well, you learn about. So it's not that I crushed an account, but still something I really, I want to I wanna sleep well, let's say. I, I don't want to hold positions overnight. That's one of the reasons why I say, well, I want to um, automate my trading intraday, but then I might be in a meeting. I might be focused on something else, whatever. So I, I really cannot focus on, on entering um, 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 the positions. And that's then the starting point where you realize, well, automating your trading here, working with algorithms, probably getting the job done. And then you take it from there. And this is how I built um, here this, this um, um, idea of whether this is for me or not, automating my trading. And um, so long thing short, you recognize a pattern. Um, you formulate clear rules you follow, you automate them, you see if it works, and then you play around with this and, and optimize it um, um, so that in the long run, you get a rising equity curve and obviously trading with a positive expectancy. And then from the back test, you start to trade it live in the real world, but with a forward test. That's something I um, um, also did a webinar together with you, if you remember. And um, yeah, that's just, this is then the way to, to start, in fact. So Let's have a look here at the summary of today's webinar. So in compar comparison to manual trading, automated trading reduces the so-called emotional component and thus especially negative emotions, cognitive biases, having um, which have usually an impact on the overall profitability of an approach. That might be the case in terms of loss aversion, for example. So right now, for example, I have an FX um, um, algorithm running 
entering my 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 market um, um orders already in the morning sitting here completely um relaxed and then and just um we'll see how how the trade works out because it entered the market in the morning as a stop has a take profit and takes out if it's not hitting it's take um take profit respectively stop loss um into the into the evening then um and closes the trade out and then I take the next trade the next day again. Um, this is part of my trading portfolio, strategy portfolio, um, but still something where I don't need to think about anymore. Um, sometimes I certainly enter if I see like elevated volume. So in this case, or elevated volatility, especially when I see what's happening right now in JP, JPY crosses, well, sometimes I, I also have a look. And if I see a massive extension here on the upside, on the downside, um, and I see that um, my take profit, which is automated, um, um, automatically entered into the platform, um, is not hit. And we see an extension here, um, and we're falling short, let's say, of something like 10 pips to reach this take profit. And I am no risking to see the market um, sharply reversing for whatever um, 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 trigger event might run over the news ticker. Well, I might probably go aggressively after the trade or probably take it out manually. Doesn't happen that often. That's another um, story, by the way, how to um, um, optimize here your um, um, automated trading by discretionary intervening. Um, but this is definitely something um, um, why automation of your trading should be um, 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 considered. Automated algorithmic and quantitative trading have slight but notable differences, um, some might argue, even though most of um, uh, the time mean, in fact, the same, automating um, the trading process. That might also be true when it comes to discretionary trading. And the core areas here of algorithmic trading are quantitative analysis and modeling. So this is where you start. In fact, then you have to have programming skills or find someone who has them, build a team, and then take it from there. Um, and then trading and financial market knowledge. So for example, to, to give you an idea how this works. So I also want to get started in the world, wanted to get started in the world of, of programming, but I wasn't at the same level as other guys um, in this area. But then on the other hand, I was the trader. I was someone who really knew what he's talking about and hopefully still knows what he's talking about. Um, and then you can build teams. So you can say, well, I have an idea here. Um, so what do you think about this? Could you program this? Could we check this out together? Could you, could you build an, an algo? And testing what what I what I was thinking about, and then you might say yes, sure. Um, why not? Then you see, okay, it works. Well, what do you think? Do you are you interested to to, to trade it live together with me? Let's say I put um, um, amount X, you put amount um, Y, we combine it, and then we we take it from there. We build kind of a small hedge fund or something like that. So that, that might sound silly, but um, it could be a starting point of a great trading career, in fact, and, and something you should consider. So trading as a, as a very, um, as an endeavor, which is, which is let's say, <laughs> well, we, you don't have that many friends or you don't have that many uh, colleagues. Um, and if you have someone who is um, sharing your, your um, passion for, for, in this case, the world of trading, well, why not um, use um, um, this then as a, as a starting point to build a team and then take it from there. So coming to the last point, algo trading requires studying a lot, for sure. Um, you have to make sure that you also um, stay on track here and, and understand which developments we get to see. Um, there's lots of YouTube tutorials, which are completely for free, blogs, forum, online courses. Um, the learning never stops, but it's definitely worth it. It can be really the starting point of um, yeah, finding your edge and, 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 and conserving your edge, let's say, and, and really taking it from there. Um, and so that's it. That's it um, for, for today. Um, I, hope, I hope you enjoyed the session. Um, and here are the contact details. If you have Interest, if you're interested in, in further infos around Admirals as a broker, um, what Admirals offers, please feel free to check out admiralmarkets.com for further information. Use the contact details. Fully regulated broker. So we finish as usual here with a risk disclaimer. Um, and um, that's it from my end. So have a nice weekend. <laughs> yeah, enjoy yourself. Uh, talk to you again next week on Wednesday. Um, that will be the last webinar uh, before Easter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I really look forward to it. So um, talk to you then. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. And uh, all the best from Germany. See you. Bye-bye.